So my keys to the future of 3D printing for production are in, broken down into basically four main categories. So the first area that I'm going to cover is technology. Um, I am going to focus primarily on two main technologies that, in my opinion, brought 3D printing more to the, to the main stage of future full production. So in my opinion, this was the first system that was truly developed with production in, in mind. So the system has a printer. It also has a full post-processing station that comes along with it. And post-processing, we'll get into a little bit later, but post-processing is always um, an afterthought almost when it comes to 3D printing. And for production, it needs to be not an afterthought and more in the forefront. So HP, when they developed this, they, they really looked at how do we create a system here that's going to handle production, not just prototyping. You know, when we start talking about production, we need to get faster systems. Um, quality has to be there. Um, there's a lot of inspections, ISO certifications, regulatory things that go along with production parts. The so quality is key. Um, cost is certainly always an issue when we start talking about production, especially when we start you know, talking about production 3D printed parts and how they compare to costs of injection molded parts. So cost is definitely an issue and HP has answered that as well. And then the materials and the workflow that they've come up with, they're always advancing materials and we'll get into that a little bit further, but the workflow is also seamless because of the post-processing station and the ability to um, you know, track parts and know where they are within, within the process. The one thing that's great about the system is that it is powder bed fusion. So we have the ability to put parts into a box, X, Y, and Z. Most other technologies, printing technologies, are based on a 2D array. So whether it's a photopolymer or an FFF or an FDM system, most of them are built out in 2D array, so you're limited to what you can build in that space. With the HP system, the powder bed fusion, it allows us to populate parts X, Y, and Z and really fill out those builds to get high quantity of parts in every build. The other nice thing about it is that the powder bed system is its own support. So when parts are populated in here, one of the challenges with a lot of other technologies is, you know, to support the part. How do we support it? Where are the supports going to be? And again, how much the supports affect the post-processing. So this system really lends itself to production because it's kind of laying in its own support, which is the powder. The HP technology also lends itself to being, you know, set up in a production level environment. So no different than what we see today with injection molding facilities where there are rows and rows of injection molding machines, I believe, and, and we're already starting to see that companies are doing this. So they're outfit, outfitting themselves with large magnitude of printers. Um, Protocam here, we're doing the same thing. And with the HP system, it's very easy to scale, bring in multiple systems, post-processing stations, and outfit a facility very similar to what you would see in an injection molding. So this is a case in point as to how a production facility would look. And I know that people, when, when we talk about production, people always question, well, what does production mean? Like, what type of volume are we talking about? And um, with the Smiles Direct, just to give you an example, they're producing 500 aligner molds per batch with each printer running twice a day. And that returns 49,000 molds. So it's equivalent to 40, 49,000 aligners a day with 343 a week. So it's 17,836 molds a year. So that's pretty high volume um, when we're talking about additive. Think about what they're doing here. So they're making individualized custom molds for every person. There would be no other way to actually do this um, in, in a production setting without this technology. There wouldn't be a way to make molds for every set of teeth for each specific person. And it's a true production facility. So I just wanted to put that out there because I know a lot of times we talk about production and quantities and people are always saying, well, you can make, you know, 500 parts or a thousand parts. They're making hundreds of thousands of parts. And it just goes to show that it can be used for a production means. The system also takes advantage of thermoplastic materials. So we're dealing with materials that are reusable recyclable and this is important as we go forward right to sustain our 
our existence here is to make sure that we can use materials that are um, recyclable. Certainly HP has done this and they have an, a roadmap moving forward here showing a lot of different materials that they're going to develop, um, which they already have, um, you know, as we talked about earlier, the polypropylenes, um, the glass beads, the flame retardants. So they have a long roadmap here and a lot of large companies helping them develop materials so that we can keep advancing the technology and move it further into production. Another company that we hear a lot about when we talk about production is, is Carbon. So Carbon with their digital light synthesis technology has come out. This is photopolymer chemistry, but their chemistry is pretty unique. The first thought of carbon when it came out was how fast it prints. So carbon brings to the table much more than that with, with materials. So they developed a chemistry where they can do two-part resins, which are thermoset, but have some UV inhibitors in it that allow them to cure, which gives them a whole new range of material that they can develop with this technology. And they've done that. So they have biocompatible materials. They have cyanide esters that uh, act like 15% glass filled nylon. They're running EPX epoxy based materials that compared to 20% glass filled PBT. So they have a real broad range of materials. And why it's important is that these materials need to be able to perform in a production environment as we move forward here. And we're seeing it with other companies as well. But I think carbon was one of the first ones to come out with a photopolymer type resin that is able to be used for production. Another aspect of carbon that they bring to the table, like the ability to texture models. So you can see the different textures that you can apply. So we can apply texture to models that make them not look like a 3D printed part. The other thing that they offer within their, their software is the ability to create lattices. The so lattices have also come a long way and we're seeing a lot more people developing products around lattice structures. Uh, carbon specifically. So when we talk about lattice structures and we talk about production, um, here's two perfect examples again to show that we are moving in the direction of production with the Adidas uh, Future 4 sneakers. And also you can see it in the Rydell helmet story. Um, the lattice structure was critical to help in this because not only can you create a lattice, but you can create lattice structures with different densities throughout the structure to help support a helmet that, you know, maybe a helmet's different for a quarterback and where he needs impact versus a lineman where he needs impact. So the ability to do customized lattice structures to help different loads and impacts is pretty powerful stuff. And it's another great um, use case of additive in production. They've also transitioned into regular parts and again, applying textures. So you can see the model up in the top for the Raptor, the Ford Raptor. Um, they applied that texture to it, and now that part, to anybody who would pick that part up, would look no different than an injection molded part because of the texture, because of the layer lines or, or lack of layer lines that the carbon technology possesses. Um, it really lends itself to that application where, hey, we don't want it to look like a 3D printed part, but the performance is there, and that's the key with carbon. The materials performance is there.